Lost treasure in Occult's devious plans to resurrect an evil creature. Horde of the Dragon Queen is a campaign for those who wish to travel through the Sword Coast, infiltrate an organization's operations, and perhaps encounter a dragon here and there along the way. This will be a very brief explanation of the story that you and your party will encounter when going through the module, Horde of the Dragon Queen. Your adventure begins when you spot the town of Greenest being raided and attacked by a blue dragon. Rushing into the fray, you aid the townsfolk by guiding them towards a large building known as the Keep. As you escort the townsfolk, you bump into hordes of cultists and kobolds. Fighting through these raiders, you finally reach the Keep. Here is where you meet Governor Nighthill. Grateful for your protection of the townsfolk, he requests that you aid him throughout the night. Nighthill sends you on various missions to save the town and prevent the keep from falling. Thankfully during your mission, the blue dragon flying overhead leaves the town. As sun breaks, and just as the raid ends, a half-blue dragon named Cyanrath calls out for a challenger to fight him. The half-dragon holds some townsfolk as prisoners, and gives his word to free them after the challenger completes the duel. One of the prisoners is a woman, who is the sister to a guard on top of the wall of the keep. If you don't accept the challenge yourself, the guard will step forward and be brutally murdered during the duel. Cyanrath upholds his end of the bargain, and lets the prisoners go, hauling off loads of treasure as he leaves. With this duel, the raid ends and you are left to lick your wounds from a brutal night. When the dust settles, it is apparent that the town is in shambles. Governor Nighthill approaches you with a desperate plea. He asks that you follow these raiders and find out more information about them. Not many men are left from the town, and the ones that are still alive are severely wounded. You agree to help the governor and make your way out. As you track down the cultists, you find their trail leading to a large camp. From the entrance, you see plenty of kobolds and cultists but many mercenaries as well. Blending into the crowd, you enter the camp to learn information about these raiders. You find that the cult running this operation belongs to the Cult of the Dragon. They have been raiding many small towns for their treasure, but decided to finally raid the larger town of Greenest. Their main goal seems to be amassing treasure, but instead of selling it, they seem to be hoarding it. Additionally, hushed talks of dragon eggs hiding in the camp makes its way to your ears. You spot some cultists loading the treasures of the town into a cave. Attempting to investigate further, you are caught by the cultist as an outsider and brought before Frulam Mondath. She declares that you will be executed tomorrow morning and has you tied to a post. As they finish binding you, you notice a monk next to you who is also tied to his own post. During the night, he introduces himself as Leosin of the Harpers. He shimmies a hidden dagger from his boot and cuts the rope from both of your posts. Leosin was investigating the cult's recent activity and decided to let himself be captured. While in captivity, he was able to learn much of the cult's secrets. Feeling as though his plans have been compromised by your arrival, Leosin suggests that the two of you return to Greenest to report to Governor Nighthill. Trekking back to the town of Greenest, you notice the town has cleaned up significantly from that eventful night. You report your findings of the Cult of the Dragon to Governor Nighthill and mention the rumors of dragon eggs in the raiders' camp. Governor Nighthill requests that you travel back to the raiders' camp and keep a watchful eye on the group, a night like the other must not be allowed to happen again. Theosin tells you that he needs to travel to Elterol and meet a man named Froom. If anything noteworthy were to happen at the camp, you can travel there and discuss methods of moving forward with him. Arriving to the camp, you are greeted with a much different sight. The camp is abandoned except for their occasional raider that is left behind. Taking advantage of this opportunity, you enter the cave to find the dragon eggs. As you delve deep into the cavern, you find both Mondath and Cyanrath guarding some chambers. This time, you defeat both of the cultists and capture them for questioning. They reveal that the raiding operation is being overseen by the two of them, and they were ordered to gather loot by a half-black dragon named Resmir. Traveling forward to the guarded chambers, you discover that their plans are much more grand than what you thought. A carving of a five-headed dragon emerging from a volcano lines the wall. You recognize the figure as Tiamat, the Queen of Dragons. In the middle of another chamber room, you find two black dragon eggs and a third egg hidden in the corner. You smash them to pieces, knowing fully well that nothing good could come out of allowing those eggs to hatch. On the desk belonging to Mondath, you spot a map ambiguously denoting movement from the camp to up north. Lastly, you search high and low for the treasure of Greenest, and nothing is to be found. 
you grab the map and begin your journey to El Tarol. You meet with Leosin in El Tarol and hand over both the map and the captives. He introduces you to Froom of the Order of the Gauntlet. Leosin and Froom look at the map and deduce that the Cult of the Dragon must be taking the treasure up north. You can intercept them at Boulder's Gate and follow along with the cultist to see where it leads you. With your new mission in mind, Leosin and Froom take their leave to report back to their respective organization, leaving the lost treasure for you to handle. You make your way to Baldur's Gate where you find the cultists joining a caravan with their stolen goods. None of the cultists seem to recognize you for now, so you apply yourself to be a guard of said caravan. As you travel north, past the city of Waterdeep, you pick up some travelers on the road. Two of note that enter the caravan are a Red Wizard of Tay and a Shifty Gnome. The Red Wizard of Tay goes by the name of Asbara Joss and is found occasionally talking to the cultist. The gnome on board introduces herself to you as Jomna Gleamsilver and claims she has been following the cult as well. With a newfound ally, she wishes to tag along with you until you find the stolen treasure's destination. North of Waterdeep, the caravan stops at a supply depot known as Karnath Roadhouse. Here, the cultists unload the crates of treasure into a locked room that is protected by a half-orc. With the help of Jomna, you steal the key of the locked room from the half-orc and sneak into the storage facility. You find it empty except for a hidden tunnel in the corner of the room. With no other leads left to follow, you enter the tunnel in pursuit of the treasure. You emerge out of the tunnel into a marshy land where you find difficulty traversing. Lizardfolk appear from the depths of the swamp to attack you but you fend them off and attempt to converse with them. They explain that the Bullywugs and themselves have been hauling off crates of goods through these marshes and into a castle nearby. The Lizardfolk agree to take you to the castle in hopes that you will overthrow the inhabitants, for they have been mistreated by the Bullywugs that occupy the castle. Upon reaching the building, you sneak your way in to find Asbara Joss and Resmi residing within and use this opportunity to attack. The two of them dash for a chamber room and teleport away by uttering a passphrase. You decide to clear out the Bullywooks to liberate the Lizardfolk, and find the passphrase hidden on a parchment in Resmir's chamber. You step into the chamber room and utter the secret phrase, to find yourself engulfed in a blinding light before teleporting away. Gust of cold freezing wind pelts you as you find yourself high on top of a mountain. You see a lodge, and can only assume this is the direction of which Resmir must have escaped. You barge through the front doors of the lodge, hoping to catch the half-dragon in time. Here you find cultists who are incredibly surprised to see you along with a woman dressed in white. She introduces herself as Talus and that she belongs to the Cult of the Dragon. Talus explains that she wishes to climb the ranks of the Cult of the Dragon and is willing to aid you if it means the defeat of a higher ranking member. She explains that Resmir has been gathering treasure for a horde dedicated to Tiamat, the Queen of the Dragons. A cloud giant sky castle parked at the city of Parnast is being used to transport the treasure to a location known as the Well of the Dragons. She hands you a banner and tells you to raise it when approaching the castle to indicate yourself as an ally to the cult. Lastly, she tells you of a secret phrase that will grant you safe passage once aboard the sky castle. You accept Talus' aid and pursue the city hopefully before the castle departs. The village of Parnast is overrun by cultists. Many are afraid to speak against them, and some are even working with the cultist. A small few are willing to speak to you about the location of the castle, and tell you that it is only a few miles off from the village. As you approach the castle, you raise the banner which allows you to enter the castle unalarmed. During your exploration of the castle, the ground underneath you rumbles, and you understand that the castle is now moving through the skies. There is little time left, and you must stop it before it reaches its destination. You fight your way through hordes of cultists, a vampire, and a dragon who sits on top of a horde of treasure that seems suspiciously familiar. Found in her own chamber, Resmir prepares herself for battle against you, for her plans must succeed. She lunges at you with her long, sinister blade, and the two of you collide until only one victor stands. You have beaten the half-dragon into submission and decide to bind her as you figure out a way to stop this castle. Further in the halls is a cloud giant named Blagothkus. He introduces himself as the owner of the castle and a proud giant who wishes for his kind to once again pick up arms against the dragons. The giant believes if Tiamat is risen, his kind will be forced to deal with the danger as a call to action. You befriend the giant and, with a little bit of persuasion, convince him that it would be in his best interest to change the course of the castle. 
he agrees with you and changes the course of the castle northward. Asbara Joss, who has been watching from the distance, takes his leave and abandons the castle. With the course change, you have prevented the treasure from falling into the hands of the Cult of the Dragon, thus ending this campaign and beginning the rise of Tiamat. Hello everybody! If you guys enjoyed the story of the Horde of the Dragon Queen, please subscribe and give me a like. It would really help me out. Thanks!